to the entertaining Talking Sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Hope everybody's staying safe out there. I uh, had a couple of my subscribers ask me to do a power ranking after NFL free agency, kind of breaking down all the teams and see where people think I have, you know, have all the teams, the New York Giants obviously being mine, but I'm going to rank all the teams, 1 to 32. I'm going to talk about some of the offseason moves, some of the free agent acquisitions, and I know before I get started that 90% of you guys are not going to agree with me because that's the way these work. Um, whether you're a Giant fan, whether you're a Jaguar fan, whether you're a Steeler fan, whoever you may be, you're probably going to think your team should be higher, but this is where I personally honestly see each team. Um, and another thing I want to keep in mind before I get started, I did not look at any schedules. This is not a prediction on where I think they'll finish in the standings. This is where I think they stand as of now in terms of talent on the football team and where I would rank them going into the 2020 regular season. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We're going to start at number 32, and that, of course, is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, maybe I shouldn't have said, of course, there were a couple teams that could have gotten this honor, but the Jaguars get the honor of being the worst team in football on my first ever power rankings, which I'm going to do in the regular season every week, by the way. Um, the quarterback, of course, they decide to stick with Gardner Minshew. Minshew was a rookie last year, actually played pretty well for the Jaguars. They move on from Nick Foles. Their entire defense is gone. If you look at the uh, defense from the 2017 that went to the AFC Championship game, outside of Yannick Ngakwe, it is a completely new roster. They've shed themselves of cap space. They traded away all the players, and they're starting to rebuild in the draft. Um, but my guess is they're going to win the Trevor Lawrence Bowl. I think in the end, the Jaguars get the number one pick next year. They finish dead last, and they end up getting Trevor Lawrence. In terms of the players they brought in the, in the draft, they brought in some good players. Uh, they had the 9th and 20th pick. They got C.J. Henderson, Caleb on chase on. They got LaVishka Chenault, who was thought to be a, um, you know, a first-round wide receiver at some point in the process. He got hurt during the combine. So they brought in a couple of talented players. Um, I thought Henderson was a bit of a reach at 9, but they definitely need a cornerback. So I understood the pick. And Caleb on chase on, to me, was the second-best edge rusher in this year's draft. But none of that's going to be enough to get them towards relevancy in the uh, 2020 regular season. Just my opinion. Next team we got up, number 31, and that being the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are just a complete and utter disaster, and they've been that way uh, for a number of years. Now, the bright side with the Cincinnati Bengals, they went out there and got Joe Burrow out of LSU with the number one pick this year, and Burrow might end up being one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. I'm not going to take that away from him. What the Bengals are going to need to do is they are going to need to support this guy with a foundation. You're going to need to get him weapons. You're going to need to shore up that offensive line. You're going to need to get a much better defense. In terms of the draft after Burrow, they brought in T. Higgins, um, a wide receiver out of Clemson, tall, you know, tall threat, a guy I thought the Giants could have t taken possibly in the second round, and Logan Wilson, another guy that I really like for my New York Giants out of Wyoming, a middle linebacker. They also had a DJ Reader, Trey Waynes, and Von Bell in free agency. So they brought in some veterans, but I still don't think this makes this team any good this year. I think this is a rebuilding year. You get Joe Burrow's feet wet. If you win four or five games, that's great. And you think about the future. But at least they got their future quarterback. Next team we're going to talk about, number 30, the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions were picking right ahead of the New York Giants in the draft at number three. And I don't really have them improving much at number 30. To me, again, a team that's in complete rebuild mode. Uh, maybe they get Stafford back. Maybe Stafford bounces back to his old form. It's possible. I liked a lot of the guys they brought in yet again, but they were picking at the top of the draft, so shouldn't be shocked there. They bring in Jeff Okuda. They bring in Swift, the running back, Julian Okwara, a guy I really liked out of Notre Dame, the edge rusher. Um, they brought in Vitae from the Eagles to try to show up that offensive line. Another former Patriot they bring in did the same thing last year with Jamie Collins, Desmond Trufant. Um, they traded away Darius Slay, and they lost Glasgow, the offensive lineman. But I, I still think this team is a complete rebuild mode. My guess is um, they'll probably be uh, getting a new head coach in 2021. I could be wrong, but I, I think, again, this team's going to struggle, and that's why I got him at number 30. Next team we got up, number 29, the Carolina Panthers. Carolina Panthers bring in Matt Rule. They pay him a ridiculous amount of money. I think it was a seven-year deal, and he's supposed to bring hope to this franchise. This team, much like the Giants two years ago, are completely starting from scratch. They are, it looks as if they're going to get rid of Cam Newton. They bring in Teddy Bridgewater on a three-year, uh, $63 million contract. I don't think Teddy's the long-term answer. I think they look at him as a guy that mans the fort for a year or two, and then they bring in the guy via the draft. 
Say they get the number one pick, maybe they end up with Trevor Lawrence. That might be what they're looking at next year's draft, whether it's Lawrence, whether it's another quarterback. But they got rid of a lot of pieces. Obviously, Luke Keekley retired. James Bradbury goes to the New York Giants. Mario Addison goes to the Buffalo Bills. Uh, you know, uh, they bring in Robbie Anderson, who I suppose is a decent threat for Teddy Bridgewater. But all in all, I think Carolina is one of the worst teams in the league, and that's why I got him at 29. Next team up, we've got the Washington Redskins. Don't kill me, Redskins fans. I know i got some Redskins fans on my channel for sure. I do think they have a very bright future. I even said on my live stream the other night that they may have the best defense in the NFC East, but I don't trust Dwayne Haskins yet. The guy, to me, hasn't gotten it done. The offensive line is a huge question mark for me. You didn't really add any great weapons for him to improve um, in year one, and I, uh, year two, rather, and I can't blame you. Chase Young was on the board. You had to take Chase Young. You've got a bright young nucleus for that defense now with him and Sweat. Um, but I don't think they improved the offensive line enough. That's just me, and I don't think that they get, gave him enough weapons for Dwayne Haskins really to succeed in year two. I see him being in a lot of trouble. We'll see what Ron Rivera does. I have a lot of respect for him as a head coach, and maybe he'll get the job done, but I do not like the future, at least this year, for the Washington Redskins. That's why I got him sitting there at number 28. Next up, number 27, we've got the Atlanta Falcons, and I've seen the Falcons ranked as high as like 16. 15 in some of these power rankings. I don't understand it. To me, this team is a complete and utter mess. I mean, they bring in Dante Fowler. That's nice. They lose Austin Hooper. They lose Desmond Trufant. They lose Vic Beasley. The defense is awful. They lose pieces to begin with. Uh, you know, in the draft, I thought they reached on A.J. Terrell. He's a, he's a nice player, but I didn't think he should have went where he went. They get Marlon Davidson and Matt Hennessy, a nice young center prospect out of Temple, but he's not going to make an immediate impact for this football team. At the end of the day, I think they're in a lot of trouble because they're paying Matt Ryan and Julio Jones a lot of money. They have way too many holes on that defense, and I do not like the Falcons at all. I've got them near the bottom of my list. Next up, number 26. We've got the Miami Dolphins, and the Dolphins went out there, and they did a lot this offseason. They really did. They spent a ton in free agency, and this is not a knock on the Dolphins. Last year, the Dolphins, to me, they were a one-win football team, and they outkicked the coverage, and maybe they'll do the same thing this year with Brian Flores as the head coach, who did a great job there. They spent a boatload of money in free agency. I mean, you look at the guys they brought in, Byron Jones, Van Noy, Shaq Lawson, Eric Flowers, we know him well, Agba, Jordan Howard. I mean, they brought in a lot of big names. They were the big spenders in free agency. We all know you don't win in the offseason, though. Uh, they drafted Tua, which is why I think they're going to struggle a bit. I know that Fitzpatrick will probably start the season. But even if you're banking on Fitzpatrick, you look at Fitzpatrick historically, he usually goes back and forth. Um, one year he'll look great, the next year he'll look horrible. That's what it was with the Jets and many other teams that he's played for in the past. They reached him, in my opinion, on Austin Jackson at 18. He is a good tackle, though, and should help Tua in the future, but I, I still think the Dolphins are in rebuild mode, which is why I got them at 26. Next team up, number 25, we got the New York Jets. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing about the New York Jets. One thing that I appreciated that they did, they really went out there and they fixed that offensive line. Now, we're going to have to wait and see how it all pans out, but they brought in a top-tier center in free agency. Um, they draft Makai Becton at number 11, so they made it a focal point to really address that offensive line, something that they should have done last year for Sam Darnold, but they lose Robbie Anderson. They do draft Denzel Mims, who to me, I think could have a really nice year for them because I don't know where else he's throwing the football. But if they could sure up that offensive line and generate a push, maybe you could build this offense around Le'Veon Bell and the strong secondary you have there, and maybe the Jets surprise some people and they, and they finish with eight or nine wins. But until I see Sam Darnold progress, until I see this offensive line significantly improve, I can't have, have him much higher than where I do, and that's at number 25. Next up, we got my team, the New York Giants. And I know a lot of Giants fans are going to be upset. They're going to want me to have them like at like 15 or 10. Um, to me, I'm still taking a conservative approach. I think 24 is fair. You look at most power rankings, they're like 28, 29, 27. Some of them have them in the, in, in the low 20s. I think 24 is fair. Now, the Giants have a very tough schedule. I don't know where they're going to finish in the standings this year. and Maybe they surprise some people with the new head coach, Joe Judge. Everybody knows that I love what they did in the offseason, addressing the offensive line. They brought in some veteran help on the defensive side of the football. McKinney brings a lot of versatility. Obviously, the veterans with Martinez and Bradbury. The younger players should only get better. I definitely think the Giants are headed in the right direction. I just don't think this is the year yet. I think next year you're going to see them really compete and do some damage possibly in the NFC East. 
But this year, I still think we're a year early before the Giants are really ready to take off. But you never know, Daniel Jones, if he could take that huge step forward like a guy like Carson Wentz did in his second year or Pat Mahomes did in his second year, maybe the Giants could surprise some people. But I'm not banking on it. That's why I got him at 24. Next up, number 23. We've got the Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders playing their first season there in uh, in Vegas. I am not, I was not the biggest fan of their draft. They went heavy at the wide receiver position. They took three wide receivers with their first four picks. Now, I know Bowden could play some running back, but they got Henry Ruggs, Lynn Bowden, and Brian Edwards, uh, three out of their first four picks. They spent a lot in free agency. They brought in the linebacker that I wanted with Littleton. Uh, really good fit there. Carl Nassib, uh, they brought in Mariota to compete. To be the backup, and they brought in the uh, linebacker. I think it's pronounced Kiatowski, but he's from the uh, from the Bears, who was another guy the Giants had their eyes on. We'll see how it all plays out. To me, the Raiders are still a team I don't really believe in. I know they got off to a decent start last year, and they surprised some people that they were competing early on. I'm not buying into it, even with the moves they made in free agency. I didn't love their draft. I still think that they're going to find it hard to compete in that AFC West. Next up, number twenty-two. We've got the Arizona Cardinals, and I know a lot of people are really high on this team. I I do. They're they're like the flavor of the month, you know, because, you know, all the fantasy stats, they see Kyler Murray, they bring in DeAndre Hopkins. How could you have them at 22? They got Isaiah Simmons. They got all these flashy players. They still got one of the worst offensive lines in the sport, and they didn't address it to me. They didn't spend up in free agency on the offensive line. They waited till the third round to take a project offensive lineman with Jones. Yes, I liked him. Never really wanted him with the Giants, though. I wanted to take an offensive lineman in the first round. That's my biggest worry with them, and I don't think Simmons is going to make their defense great overnight. I think they're headed in the right direction. They definitely got a lot of nice pieces, but until they fix that offensive line, me personally, I don't see the Cardinals doing a lot of damage. Now, maybe they surprise some people. Like I said with Daniel Jones, maybe Murray takes that huge step forward this year. I don't see it. Next up, we've got a team that was in the Super Bowl just two years ago, and how quickly they have fallen. Down a lot of these power rankings, they've lost a lot of players. Obviously, they lose Gurley, who's not the player that he once was. They did draft a linebacker to fill in for him. They, they lost the aforementioned Corey Littleton, who to me is one of the best coverage linebackers in the sport. They lost Fowler, who I think had double-digit sacks for them last year. They did add Floyd, Leonard Floyd, from the Bears to replace him. Um, and they brought in Brock, who's a defensive tackle. But all in all, I didn't love, I didn't love their offseason. I don't think they did enough. I think this is a team that is really trending in the wrong direction. And I have a great subscriber, L.A. Lou's a big Rams fan. I know he's not going to like hearing that. That's just my honest opinion. I, I do not love the direction of the Rams. They built through free agency, and I think they're trending downwards. I think they're going to have to rebuild. I could be wrong. We'll see how it all plays out, and maybe they surprise some people. They uh, did draft Cam Akers to replace Gurley. Should have mentioned that. Van Jefferson, the wide receiver, and Terrell Lewis. Not bad picks, but I don't think it does enough to make them a real contender this year. Next up at 20, Chris Sinor's team, the Chargers. Um, you know, the Chargers do have a very good defense. They really do. Probably a top five, six, seven defense in the sport. And I liked what they did in terms of the draft. They needed to take a quarterback this year, but that's what comes when you take a rookie quarterback. And I know people will say they're going to start Tyrod Taylor. Maybe Taylor will start the whole year. I don't see it. I think if you draft Herbert that early, a four-year starter, very smart guy at Oregon, I think they're going to see what they got at some point this season. Taylor will probably start opening day, and maybe he'll start the first three, four, five games, but I think Herbert gets at least 10 starts there, and usually when you start a rookie quarterback, more often than, than not, he's going to have to go, he's going to have a learning curve, and that's what I think the Chargers will go, go through, and if they start Tyrod Taylor, well, Taylor's a journeyman uh, for a reason, but anything could happen. Maybe if everything broke right, they could win 10 games, and they could make the playoffs, but with that great defense, I still don't see it because of the rookie quarterback or the journeyman starting there. They did have a really nice free agency period. I give them credit for that. Linvel, Joseph, Brian Bulaga, Chris Harris, they got a pretty cost-effective deals. They're definitely going to make an impact there. Uh, Kenneth Murray was a really nice pickup for them. They traded back up into the end of the first round to get their linebacker. And Joe Reed's a nice, versatile wide receiver they got in the later round. So I, I liked a lot of the things the Chargers did. I just think they're a, rebuild, uh, a rebuilding franchise right now. Next up. We've got the Minnesota Vikings, and the Minnesota Vikings lost a lot on that defense. They lost a lot of veterans. They obviously traded away Stephon Diggs. They got a lot of draft picks because of it, but I really, I, I really don't see it for the Vikings this year. I liked them last year. I had them going to the playoffs before the season started. I don't have them making it this year, even with the expanded field. I don't like the players that they lost. 
I just don't see it. Now, they drafted Justin Jefferson, who should do a good enough job, I think, filling in for Diggs. It, you know, they did, they did get him. Jeff Gladney's a corner who could be really good, but it usually takes at least a year, if not two, for a corner to trans, you know, translate into the NFL. Their offensive line's still poor. That's why they went out and got Ezra Cleveland, who could be a good tackle, but everything I read on that guy, he is a developmental piece. He's not going to be, be an impact player day one on that line for the Vikings. And Troy Dye is a guy I really like. Good coverage linebacker in the fourth round. We'll see what he turns into, if anything, in the NFL. But he's definitely a nice piece uh, for the Vikings. But I just think they lost too many pieces. I think they take a bit of a step back. We'll have to wait and see. I know some people may have the Vikings a bit higher. I got him at 19. Next up, number 18. We've got the Houston Texans. Oh, baby, the Houston Texans. What the hell was Bill O'Brien doing this year? They traded away everybody. And I, I just don't like the direction of that franchise. They didn't get nearly enough for some of the pieces that they lost. And I, I just don't like it. I mean, their, their wide receivers are still pretty solid, but you lose DeAndre Hopkins. They brought in Randall Cobb. They got Brandon Cooks. They got Will Fuller. Fuller never stays healthy. Uh, David Johnson, when he's healthy, he is a solid running back, even though he really hasn't been for a while with the, with the Cardinals. I just don't like what they did this year. But because you got Watson, I still think they remain right around that 500 mark. And maybe they could get 9 or 10 wins and sneak into the playoffs. Deshaun Watson, to me, is still a top 5 quarterback in the sport. But do not like, I, I really don't like what the, what Houston did this uh, offseason. Next up, number 17. And I see it now. I already see it in the comments. Eagles fans are going to kill me. I got the Eagles at 17. I, I didn't believe in the Eagles last year. I thought they were overhyped, and they were. They went 9-7. and seven, They made the playoffs. But if you look at all the preseason rankings last year, they were like 2nd, 3rd, 1st. I mean, everybody was so high on them, 12-4, and 13-3. They ended up going 9-7, and seven, which is where I thought they'd go about. This year, I think it's going to be right around the same, 8-8, eight 9-7. Eight, they have a lot of injury uh, concerns on that football team. And the main one, obviously, being Carson Wentz. They lost a lot of their depth, which was a big strength of theirs. So they lost Vitae, who I mentioned. They lose Malcolm Jenkins. They lose Jernigan. They lose Howard. I, I just I, I don't love it. Now, I know they, bring, they brought in Darius Slay. They made a trade. Which, yeah, and Jason Hargrove, which is a very nice defensive tackle. Uh, Hargrave, I should say. Pair him next to Fletcher Cox. That's definitely going to do damage in the NFC East. Jalen Rieger, to me, don't love the pick. I thought it was a little bit early. He's a slot wide receiver. Jalen Hurts, we don't even need to talk about. And I'm sure you guys will try to defend that Eagle fans. Uh, Wallace was a really nice pick, though. I did like him, the safety. And Casey Tuhill, I thought was a sleeper that the Eagles got in the seventh. Guy that I actually really like for the Giants to potentially be looking at in the fifth, sixth, or seventh round. Mentioned him in a few videos, but the Eagles to me, they're a fringe playoff team. They're an eight and eight, nine and seven team, um, and we'll see if they can stay healthy. Maybe they're maybe they're a lot better than that. And one thing I'll say about the Eagles, I'll never count them out. They're a tough, gritty football teams that finds ways to win games. So even though you're going to see on my power rankings, I have the Cowboys much higher. I am not ruling the Eagles out at all. Next up at sixteen, and some people may say this is too high, but I was right about the Packers last year. Everybody was sleeping on the Packers last year. They were third, fourth in the North. I'm not picking them above the Packers because I got to respect the Packers. Some people may call me crazy. I think the Chicago Bears get into the playoffs this year, or they're at least right there the entire season, and they may compete in the North. Um, and people laughed at their offseason acquisitions, and I didn't love it for the price. I really didn't. You know, they overpaid for Robert Quinn, a five-year deal, but Robert Quinn is going to make a, a, an impact on that defense. The guy had double-digit sacks for the Cowboys last year. Nick Foles fits that system very nicely, right? Nick Foles did well with the Eagles with Nagy. So there's a good fit there. I, even though I don't love Foles, I could see him playing fairly effectively with the Bears, and that's all they need at the quarterback position with that stout defense. So I think the Bears are a sleeper that a lot of people are counting out this year. I personally could see them making the playoffs. We'll see, but I got them at 16. In terms of the draft, they didn't have a first-round pick. They got Cole Komet out of Notre Dame, the tight end, who may help them a bit, and Jalen Johnson. Next up, number 15, the New England Patriots. And maybe this is a little high, maybe it's a little low for some people. I think a lot of people are just giving up on the Patriots. I have not. Now, they lost a lot, don't get me wrong. Obviously, you start with Tom Brady, and that's a huge loss for the New England Patriots. But they still have Bill Belichick, okay? They lose Jamie Collins, they lose Van Noy but they still have Bill Belichick. And Bill Belichick historically gets the most out of the players on their roster. We'll have to wait and see how it all pans out, but I'm not betting against Bill Belichick and the Patriots. I still think that they're contenders to make the playoffs at a bare minimum. They brought in uh, Kyle Duggar, uh, uh, Josh Uche, and Anthony Jennings. Jennings was a guy out of Alabama I could see fitting their defense very nicely. 
We'll see how it all plays out. Next up, number 14, the Tennessee Titans. And some people may think this is low. The Titans, after all, did go to the AFC Championship game. But what did the Titans really do? They went 9-7. and seven. They got hot. And they're the type of team I like. They built through the run. But what did they lose? They lost their best run blocker, Conklin, to free agency. I think I, I, I just don't fully believe in Tannehill. I really don't. I think they overpaid. I think Conklin could hurt them more than people realize. We'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. But I'm not fully buying into the Titans. And if there is one team that I think most people have in their top 10 or 8 teams going into the year that I could see really disappointing and maybe even missing the playoffs, it's the Tennessee Titans. That's just my honest opinion. Um, They did bring in Isaiah Wilson, who will, I assume, be the replacement for Conklin. I like Wilson. He's a big body tackle, but he's not Conklin. He's just not. Uh, Christian Fulton, a solid corner as well. We'll see how he pans out in the NFL. But I think the Titans take a little step back and might do a little worse than people give them credit for um, going into next season. Next up at number 13, the Denver Broncos. I love what the Denver Broncos did in this offseason. Uh, Drew Locke looked very good for them in limited action. I think he had like five starts last year, but he played well when given an opportunity, and they really helped him out. They get a new center in the third round with Cushenberry, K.J. Hamler, and Jerry Judy to spark that offense. They already had two really nice pass rushers on the football team, obviously with Chubb and uh, and Miller, and I like what they did. They also brought in Melvin Gordon. They bring in Glasgow to support that offensive line. Denver had a really bad offensive line last year. If some of these acquisitions can improve it, maybe Denver surprises people. Maybe they even win the AFC West, but they're, they're a team to me that's at least in contention to get a wild card, so I got them at 13. Next up, at number 12, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I know a lot of people are probably going to have them higher. I don't know. Tom Brady, he's electric. He's fun. They got a great coach with Bruce Arians. They bring in Tristan Wirfs in the draft. Antoine Winfield, a good coverage safety. I like him. Tyler Johnson, a target for Brady. But at the end of the day, Brady's 43 years old. I wouldn't be shocked if the Patri- if the Bucks missed the playoffs. They have bus written all over them, but I got to give them the respect they deserve. They got hot at the end of the year. They definitely improved their team. So maybe they will win 11 or 12 games like some people think. I'm not buying it. I think around nine. I think they could miss the playoffs. We'll see. Next up, number 11, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think this is about the right spot to have, Matt. The Pittsburgh Steelers, to me, uh, a team that maybe a lot of people are are forgetting about because you got the Cleveland Browns, who I'm about to mention right after the Steelers, but uh, Steelers, to me, are right in the thick of it. You know, obviously, Ben Roethlisberger's got big injury problems. But the Steelers have only had seven losing seasons since the merger, I think. They're the most consistent team in the history of the NFL. Roethlisberger's back. We'll see how he performs. This might be his last year of his career. They bring in Chase Claypool. Highsmith, I thought, was a nice piece. McFarland, nice running back out of Maryland. They added some nice pieces in the draft. They traditionally draft very well. We'll see how they do with Ben back. And maybe Juju Smith-Schuster, you know, has a huge season with the Steelers because he's back as well. Steelers still have a good offensive line, still have a good defense. That's where you build your team, and they're strong there. If Ben could get back to even being an average quarterback, I think Pittsburgh very much is in uh, contention in the AFC North. Next up at number 10, they're the flavor of the month they were last year. Last year, I didn't buy into them. This year, I'm buying into them a little bit more. That's the Cleveland Browns. Last year, I said the Browns were not going to be— everybody had them going 10-6, 11-5. I thought they were missing the playoffs. They ended up missing the playoffs. Mayfield has no excuses this year. You bring in Conklin. You bring in Austin Hooper. You draft Jedrick Wills. So their biggest weakness, no doubt about it, was the offensive line. They improved that. Grant Delpit, the safety also, a nice playmaker for the Browns. I like him. I like the team. We'll see what Mayfield's got this year. He's got Beckham still. It's a put-up or shut-up year for Mayfield and Beckham. If they don't win the North, it's a disappointment for that football team. Plain and simple. Next up, number nine. The Green Bay Packers. The Packers, of course, coming off an NFC uh, championship appearance. But I hated their draft. I, ju- I really did. I hated their draft. I had the Packers going to the Super Bowl last year before the year started. They almost did it. I, I Everybody called me crazy at the beginning of the year. They almost did it. I'm not nearly as high on them this year. Like I said earlier, I think the Bears may even beat them in the North. I'm going to have the Packers as a, as a favorite going in. Um, they did have, they did have some sneaky acquisitions in, ter- in terms of free agency. I think Devin Funches could be a really nice piece for Aaron Rodgers in the red zone. Um, a, n- a nice tall wide receiver. Christian Kirksey maybe fills in for Martinez. We'll have to wait and see. Of course, they lost Martinez, who led the team in tackles. Not great in coverage. 
Um, but it's going to come down to Aaron Rodgers in that running game. They brought in Dylan. I thought it was way too early. I liked A.J. Dylan out of Boston College. But in the second round, it was just way too early. Obviously, drafting Love is not going to help the team for this season. So the draft didn't really help them for this upcoming year. That's my issue with the Green Bay Packers, and it's why I have them dropping a bit. Next up, number eight, the Seattle Seahawks. And when you got Russell Wilson on your football team, you always got a chance to win a Super Bowl. Arguably the best quarterback in the sport. I like some of the players that they drafted, but I thought they reached. Like Daryl Taylor, I loved. You know, you go back, look at any of my videos. I thought he was a great target for the Giants. Maybe if they could trade up to the 80 range, 80, 80 range out of Tennessee. They got him at like 60-something. They traded up to get him. Maybe they watch my videos. I don't know. But I'm a huge Daryl Taylor guy. Colby Parkinson, another guy I like. But I thought he'd be like a six-round pick. Seahawks take him in the fourth, um, a playmaking tight end. But, yeah, Seattle traditionally drafts well. We don't know the Jadavion Clowney situation. We'll have to wait and see how that pans out. I do like Seattle. They're very much in contention in the NFC West and could easily beat out the 49ers. Next up, at number seven, the Indianapolis Colts. And some people may say this is a little high, but, you know, I'm, I'm an offensive line guy, and there's they have one of the best in the sport. They bring back Costanzo. They still got that offensive line intact. The young defense last year, to me, they didn't know what the team was because, obviously, Andrew Luck retired before the year started, and that kind of threw everything up. It was a complete mess. Now they bring in a veteran quarterback with Phillip Rivers, a guy with something to prove Rivers, to me, is a sleeper for the MVP award. I'm not picking him, but I think he's going to have a good year. And they give him some toys in the draft. Jonathan Taylor out of Wisconsin, a playmaker at the running back position. And Michael Pittman was one of my favorite wide receivers in this draft. I love what they did. They lost Ebron, but overall, I loved what they did in the draft. I love what they did in this offseason. It's kind of a win-now team with that line. You bring in a win-now quarterback, you get him some weapons, and you see what you got this year in Indianapolis. But I got them winning the AFC South as of now. Next up at number six. Oh, God, I hate this. I hate this. I hate this, but I got to be honest. The Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys, to me, had one of the best two or three drafts in the sport. They bring in a new head coach. I'm not the biggest McCarthy guy, but he's probably going to be an upgrade over Jason Garrett in terms of being a head coach. Um, and they had a really good draft, like I said. They lost some pieces. The, the secondary is definitely a weakness. They lost Byron Jones. That was a weakness to begin with, so... And they didn't address it early on in the draft in the first round because CeeDee Lamb fell in their lap. They did get Diggs in the second, which should help a bit. Gallimore's a nice DT, and Tyler Biotis was a guy that I was that I, that I had my eyes on for the New York Giants before the Cowboys jumped us. So they had a really good draft. Cowboys had a strong draft, and they're a strong football team. I say it all the time. They're strong in the trenches. It's going to come down to, you know, obviously, can Dak Prescott get him across the finish line? Um, but they, they, have, they have a really good offensive line. they got to stay healthy, and they got to get back to their old ways where they were a run-first football team. Last year, they got away from that. If they get back to that, Dallas could be dangerous. Next up at number five, the Buffalo Bills. And this is probably one of my biggest surprises. Listen, guys, I love the Buffalo Bills last year. People laughed at me last year at the beginning of the year. I had them going to the playoffs. They made it. This year, I think they're a Super Bowl contender. I'm not picking them. I'm not picking them. But I think they're one of the three or four best teams in the AFC I think Josh Allen could have a really good year. I think, you know, you can't really look at the stats with him because he's a he's kind of a, a poor man's Cam Newton. That's how I describe him. They added more weapons. They get a pass rusher with Mario Addison. Obviously, they traded to get Diggs. Now he's got all different types of wide receivers. He's got the slot guy with Beasley. He's got the guy that can take the top off. And he's got Stephon Diggs. So he's got a lot of weapons there. They add Zach Moss as well to help with Singletary in the backfield. I love what they did. Adding Addison and A.J. Epinesa should help the pass rush as well, which was kind of the only weakness to which was arguably the best defense in football last year. So I like the Bills. I think the Bills are going to definitely make the playoffs and probably win the AFC East. Next up at number four, the San Francisco 49ers. And don't be shocked if they have a Super Bowl hangover, but I got I to give them props. They got a lot of talent there. They really do. And I, they got Kinlaw. You know, that pick that they got when they traded up um, and, you know, they gave up Buckner. But they get Kinlaw to replace him. They got Brandon Ayuk, who will replace Emmanuel Sanders on a much cheaper deal. And, I mean, the defending NFC champions, you got to give them respect. But I wouldn't be shocked if the 49ers drop back further than people think. I think they're at bare minimum a wild card team. But I could see Seattle winning that division. It wouldn't shock me. Um, but I still got to give them their respect. They're a run-first football team. They have a really good head coach. With Shanahan, who knows what he's doing. So the Niners are still very much in contention to win the Super Bowl this year. Next up at number three, my pick to win the Super Bowl this year. But I got, you know, I'm going to have my three going in. And that's the New Orleans Saints. 
I think Drew Brees is going to have a farewell tour this year. I think he wins a Super Bowl, much like John Elway did his last season going in. That's my way too early prediction for you guys. I love Cesar Ruiz. May have not been a need for them. Was one of my favorite players in this year's draft. Was praying he fell to the Giants at 36. They got Zach Bond. They had Emmanuel Sanders, Malcolm Jenkins, some veteran pieces. We all know Brees needed some help in the wide receiver core outside of Michael Thomas. Um, the Saints are going to be good. I mean, they still have one of the best offensive lines in football. They only improve it with Ruiz. They are run first team, and Breeze makes the throws when they need to be made. That's what the New Orleans Saints are at this point in time. They got a really strong defense. Love what the Saints have, and yeah, to me, they are one of the one of the favorites to win the Super Bowl. Next up, Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens last year had the number one seed in the AFC. If I'm not mistaken, I think they had the best record in the sport, and they had a great draft. They drafted Patrick Queen, J.K. Dobbins, Devin Duvernay. Obviously, you got the league MVP coming back with Lamar Jackson. Duvernay is a nice piece to add to that offense. Uh, Dobbins as well. And Queen, to me, is a perfect linebacker for the system they're trying to implement. And, yeah, they're a run-first football team. They're a team that's going to jam it down your throat. And until the league is able to catch up with Lamar Jackson, they're going to be a tough team to beat week in and week out. Can they win a Super Bowl? I'm not 100% sure. But in terms of the regular season record, I'd be surprised if they win less than 11 games. Baltimore's got a really good team over there. That's why I got them at number two. And then, finally, at number one, the defending Super Bowl champion, the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I mean, they bring in the running back, Edwards Hilaire. They got Willie Gay, who's a nice linebacker, and Lucas Nyang in the draft. And, I mean, at the end of the day, they still got Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. So, they're the defending champs for a reason, and I think that they, they very well may back it up. We'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. But, guys, I want to say thank you for watching the video. It's been a while, but hopefully you enjoyed it. As always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe. Drop a comment. Maybe. Give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.